it's uh, Lloyd Atherin with Colorado 14ers Initiative. I'm up here at the summit of Mount Evans. Wanted to go through what's in my pack, my usual day pack for climbing a 14er, and some of the other gear that I wear and use when I'm out hiking the 14ers. Obviously, everyone has their own uh, level of gear that they like and what they think is sufficient, but this is what I use and I think uh, is what provides me with a great margin of safety if I got injured or I'm with someone who got injured. I have to spend an unexpected night out on a 14er. I feel like I can definitely survive and do so with a little bit of comfort. So first off, I always hike with trekking poles. Not only do they help make me more stable, protect the knees that have been doing this for <laughs> a lot of years, um, but if I got injured, you can extend them and use it somewhat as a crutch. They can also use in an emergency as uh, braces if a uh, leg gets broken or something needs to be immobilized. So we'll just drop those down. I'll take off, uh, take off my pack. This is just a conventional day pack that I've had for a number of years. Let's talk about uh, hydration and fluid. So I'll have a two liter uh, water um, bag in here. And then I have a, uh, a liter of hydration mix. Again, drinking on a 14er is always super important so that uh, you're always hydrated. Always I'm either wearing or carrying at least one layer of gloves, depending upon the, uh, the season, you know, lighter gloves if you're in July and into August. And as we're in June here, a little cooler, it was freezing overnight, um, have a little thicker pair. I'll always have at least one sun hat as a bald guy. I definitely need to protect the, uh, the sun, um, protect the scalp from the sun. Um, so I'll put these down. I have uh, one of the things that I will talk about is a series of um, little dry bags that help keep gear in the pack dry. While most packs you buy will be um, waterproof to some degree, they're always stitching and other entry points. So having things that keep your gear dry is really important. Another layer of even uh, lighter liner gloves. Um, little uh, lightweight uh, insulating and wicking layer. I can put it on as a hat. You can use it as a neck gaiter if you like. And then a uh, heavier duty wind block hat. So as the uh, wind starts to pick up, that's <laughs> um, helpful. So that in combination with a, a hoodie keeps uh, keeps my head warm and you do lose a lot of heat through your head, especially as I have uh, not much head insulation on there. Always good to have um, your head well insulated. Uh, sunscreen, high SPF is vital here in Colorado, especially as we get higher up in, in altitude. Uh, there's more UV, more chance of getting sunburn. I have some lighter weight sort of sun gloves that uh, keep the sun off my hands and um, headlamp always vital when you're out on a 14er depending upon when uh, you are in the season and how long the days are. You might be starting in the dark and ending in the dark. Headlamps are now increasingly uh, lightweight and uh, very effective old school so I have a, uh, a compass to aid in my navigation uh, have sunglasses I'll usually be be wearing these uh, the ones I have have a couple of different types of lenses for different conditions if it's uh, cloudy I can still have on those I'll oftentimes have some um, small little uh, straps that again these will work in combination with either a a day pad or um, my trekking poles to help splint something if, uh, if something goes wrong. We have the always necessary kind of uh, poop kit here, including the um, pack out bag. When we're on a 14er, we're ab in above timberline most of the time. Human waste does not biodegrade up here. So uh, a system that I can go in pack out my human waste if I have to go. Uh, toilet paper, always make sure that you are packing your toilet paper back out with you. So I've got a little Ziploc for the, uh, for the used toilet paper. Again, at high altitudes, everything is so cold that human waste doesn't biodegrade. So 
important that we get it out. I'll oftentimes carry a trash bag. So this is uh, vital as I'm helping keep 14ers clean by picking up trash that other people might have left. Uh, in a, a, an emergency, it would be an extra layer of, um, of uh, protection that you could use. Uh, we're starting to get into mosquito season, so I'll usually have a mosquito head net in combination with some uh, bug juice. So these all go in the top pocket, which uh, really readily accessible for some of the things I might need at uh, uh, a moment's notice. On my pack, I also have a, uh, a little kangaroo type pouch here. I've got my various different snacks, high energy, uh, we have carbohydrates, fats, uh, proteins, things that'll help me stay fueled. Also in this readily accessible pack, a couple of different maps. Um, again, being a little bit old school, I'll use maps and compass, although I also have on my phone uh, the 14ers.com app that lets me uh, stay navigated. Uh, bug spray, because again, mosquitoes in some areas can be a little thick. Thankfully in Colorado, it's not as bad as the Northwest where I grew up and things were wet and bugs were all over the place. So in my pack, I have a number of different layers of clothing beyond what I have. So right now, since it is a little chilly on, I've got uh, a little uh, synthetic hoodie and I've got a um, uh, fleece, micro grid kind of fleece layer sun shirt uh, and then a, a lightweight t-shirt underneath but i'll also carry additional layers of clothing uh, you want to have multiple layers of progressively thin to thick layers that you can add and they will be cumulative it's better to have multiple layers uh, so you can adjust you obviously don't want to be too hot or too cold. If you're too hot, you're sweating a lot. And then if you get in a breeze like we have now, you can get cooled down rapidly. So I have uh, some various different layers of uh, synthetic um, top and bottom. You want to avoid cotton at all cost. Cotton wicks um, water away from you. That's why it's great as a bath towel but when you are out recreating, you want something that's synthetic that's gonna wick um, water away from you and not be absorbent. And then that uh, transports the moisture away and you stay drier. It also is much better at insulating when your uh, clothing gets wet. So if we have a, thunder sun, a summer thunderstorm and everything gets doused, this clothing will still keep a lot of its insulating qualities. Uh, and then, as we talk about um, rain and thunderstorms, we've got Gore-Tex jacket, and then I've got a uh, uh, layer of, this is not fully waterproof, but is water resistant for lower uh, legs. So with this in the backpack, in worst case conditions, I could put my leg inside my little liner bag here, and with my um, Gore-Tex jacket. I'm pretty much waterproof and that will keep my other insulating layers from getting wet. Uh, I have uh, a down parka that's again inside another uh, waterproof little liner bag and then I have first aid kit with a lot of things including my um, uh, Swiss Army knife, other things that are going to be vital for uh, taking care of any incidents that may arise. So one of the other things that I use that is not quite so common here in the States, but definitely when I first came across these climbing in New Zealand is a, a full pack liner bag. Now these can be as simple as a, uh, a large trash bag or some companies make these lightweight uh, waterproof ones. They add an additional layer of water protection for all of your gear. Your backpack, while it might have coated nylon, over the years that can kind of degrade. You have seams. Uh, I've been in some intense storms over the years where pack, packs will get wet inside and the liner is just another 
uh, means of protection for keeping your gear dry and it can work as an emergency kind of uh, uh, bivy sack for at least your lower body and with your uh, Gore-Tex jacket you're pretty well covered. So this is what I carry. I also usually wear my highly fashionable uh, camera bag but it has in here as well as additional extra batteries and things. I'm carrying um, water purification tablets and I've also got some Imodium, uh, which helps if, if I somehow have uh, gotten an upset stomach and uh, <laughs> uh, need to heed the call of nature more than necessary, that takes care of me there. So this is what I use. I've been hiking and climbing mountains for uh, 40 years now and have found what works for me, what keeps me safe. I find this a lightweight, uh, acceptable, level of, of gear for pretty much any condition in the spring, summer, and fall. Now, if I were out in the winter, I would probably have a lightweight um, uh, sleeping bag and a full bivy sack so that in an emergency, I could have even more protection. Uh, again, we are gonna be pretty much 90 degrees in Denver today. It was almost freezing, actually was freezing at this high altitude overnight. So that gives you an idea of the temperature extremes we'll have on the 14ers and don't be lulled into complacency that it might be 90 to 100 degrees in Denver, that it will uh, potentially rain, snow, any any day on a 14er and you need to be prepared for that. You never know when you're gonna twist an ankle or have some sort of incident come up that requires you to stay out on the 14er.